these tunnels are the first tunnels we've opened up in the state of California in 50 years. Once they open tomorrow morning, they will be the longest tunnels that we manage at about three quarters of a mile long, um, 4,200 feet. The contractors pulled 420,000 cubic yards of rock and dirt out of these tunnels, which is about 21,000 truckloads to put it into perspective. So ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed a, a happy ending to a fairy tale that could have turned into um, a sci-fi. This is a story of road, rocks, the frog, and the fog. A story of the princess who kisses the red-legged frog and the bypass turns into a tunnel. <laughs> this tunnel is California's latest Golden Gate Bridge. It's the transportation improvement that nearly everyone said couldn't be done. Well, we're here to tell you that um, March is also Women's History Month, so at this point, I want us to put our hands together and recognize four women who literally made history by getting this tunnel on the ballot into the national budget and into this mountain. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Lenny Roberts, <laughs> Zoe Kirsten Tucker, <laughs> April Vargas, <laughs> and Senator Barbara Boxer. <laughs> and of course, let us absolutely take note and remember our late Congressman Tom Lantos, for whom this tunnel is named. This tunnel is paid for entirely by the taxpayers of this country through the federal government. And we thank Congressman Tom Lantos for the $50 million he was able to extract uh, from the federal government early on. And then Senator Barbara Boxer, as you know, was successful in getting the site declared a permanent emergency on behalf of all of us. And we want to acknowledge in particular um, Tom Lantos's wife, Annette Lantos, who is here with her daughter um, to recognize this extraordinary day. And as Annette said, no sooner had Tom got elected in 1981 that within a month or two of getting elected, this issue was first and foremost the very first project uh, he took up as a member of Congress. I think this is a, a monument to the fact that um, people do win over. Uh, people can make the system work and work better. We're here because um, of this $429 million funding but it's also a new California landmark, a safe passageway along California's spectacular coastline. Soon we'll have a new hiking and biking trail on the old roadway. Pacific is going to get a gigantic tourist attraction. Yeah. And, yeah. and you folks better have a shuttle ready um, to bring, <laughs> to, so that people can now walk along this magnificent coastal trail. Um, that is going to be here in perpetuity for everyone. And for my wonderful constituents in Montera and on the coast, you will have what you've longed for, peace of mind, knowing that you can get from your homes to work each day and in case of emergencies, not be fearful that the road will be closed. You know, I um, got into this issue in the very early 80s when I was a brand new spanking county supervisor. But, you know, it goes back in time, as I was reminded, Tom Casey, who was our county counsel, cut his teeth on this issue when Caltrans was going to move forward with its project in the early 70s, and the Sierra Club filed a lawsuit. And it was Tom Casey who was clerking the court um, judge at the time that then spent the next 30 or 40 years of his life on this issue as well. So we have had many alternatives. We had the Martini Creek alternative. We had the preferred alternative. We had the marine disposal alternative. And then I guess it was God lover Ollie Mayer who uh, dug up her old <coughs> proposals 
and made it um, a reality again to think about the tunnel. So I was um, delighted when uh, Ted Lempert, who um, is here as well today, uh, brought together a group of people to look at the, the, the ability to make this happen. And then, of course, the community came together uh, with Measure T uh, that I was um, enthusiastically supporting. And then the voters of this great county, by 74 percent, said, Caltrans, do it our way. Um, you know, it, it sometimes is said that uh, this generation just hasn't really done enough. Uh, but I'm here to say we've done a lot. And to my millennial kids um, and the X and Y generation, uh, we can say that um, since the 1989 earthquake, there's a lot that's happened in this region. Um, we've had all of the roadways retrofitted. Um, we've had hospitals and schools retrofitted. We've had uh, a new bridge uh, along the Bay Bridge area uh, built so that we can be safe as well. And the result is uh, this tunnel is also part of that um, great legacy that will be there for future generations. So today we stand here looking at our latest accomplishment, a Golden Gate Bridge of the South, a beauty that only the dreamers imagined, and a testament to the power of the ballot. Ladies and gentlemen, we think of this tunnel's um, fairy tale story of the road, the rocks, the frog, and the fog and a truly happy ending. So we're gathered here today to celebrate the irony and to learn the lesson that tunnel vision is sometimes the biggest, broadest vision of them all. It's really a thrill to be here, um, to see this come to fruition and to see so many of the people that made it happen here with big, smiles on their faces saying, think tunnel, got tunnel. So I have two presentations to make. One to you, Mr. Doherty, to the California Department of Transportation. Congratulations on completion of the Tom Lantos Tunnel at Devil's Side. These beautiful engineering marvels will provide safe, reliable transportation for generations yet to come. The tunnels are reminders of the fragility and beauty of California's coast. Roadways may slide and rocks may fall, but the determination of the people of California to protect the environment is now forever carved in stone. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then if Zoe and Lenny and April can come forward um, to the Citizens Alliance for the Tunnel. Congratulations on completion of the Tom Lantos Tunnels at Devil Slide. The vision conceived through Measure T is now a reality. Never doubt the ability of a small group of determined citizens to make the world a better place in which to live. Job well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Bravo, bravo. All of you made it happen, so thank all of you. To the people. Good morning, everyone. It's a great, great privilege and it's an exciting day. It's a historic day, not only for the people of San Mateo County, the people of California, and the people of our country as well. I want to begin by acknowledging the presence of two Annette Lantoses who grace uh, this uh, uh, occasion with their presence here with the tunnel being named after our late colleague, Tom Lantos, uh, who secured the original funding uh, for, uh, to build uh, a tunnel here on the coast side. At that time, it was $25 million. So to the senior Annette Lantos, to the junior Annette, thank you for being here with us. Thank you very, very much. We are a people of the Bay. We identify ourselves with the water and certainly coastsiders are blessed with the Pacific. But the mighty Pacific has been claiming the land where we are for decades and decades and decades. And there have been tragedies that have occurred here. There have been collapses. There have been closures. 
There have been rocks. There's been a lot of tumbling around about how to fix what Mother Nature was doing to this area. And so today we celebrate something that is truly historic. Uh, the first tunnel in 50 years built by the state of California. I want to acknowledge all of the workers, the Caltrans workers, the contractors, the individuals that did all of the hauling, and the human hands, the American hands that built this. Job well done, all American workers. I want to pay tribute to the engineers and their ingenuity. This is American ingenuity that we are celebrating today as well. And the unswerving advocates of the tunnelistas, as was stated by, by Malka and Doherty, all of those yellow and black uh, signs that are out there. I was proud to be an original co-sponsor of the Devil's Sly Tunnel Act in the Congress in 1997. And I want to thank all of my Bay Area colleagues. One person cannot secure these funds. And as Jackie said, these are all federal tax dollars coming home to have built what will be celebrated and appreciated by generations to come. And then it was the people of San Mateo County who provided a landslide in their own right with the vote in 1996 for Measure T, led by Zoe Kirstein Tucker and all the Tunnelistas, their vision, their vision for what could be. And I want to thank Caltrans for getting the message then. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember when I first went to the Board of Supervisors, uh, John Ward, Supervisor John Ward, said we need to go to Sacramento to meet with Caltrans. And it was uh, Birch Bachtold that I met with, and he set it down and said in no uncertain language, that road is going to be built. That's how I started out at the board. He was one tough character. But it's wonderful to see the cooperation. And I can't name all of the people, but the boards of supervisors, former members, present members, the state delegation, both in the Assembly and the State Senate, and certainly the Bay Area delegation, together with our uh, United States senators and the people, all coming together. What it says to me is that democracy has worked and that people's voices were heard, finally, and that all came together to bring this day into fruition. So God bless all of the people that made this day possible. I think that future generations will appreciate that we, in our day and our time, did something noble and good, not only for this area, not only for coastsiders, but for the people of our state and the people around the country and around the world that come to see this environmental wonder will appreciate what has been accomplished. What an honor to share this day with you. Thank you to all of you. When I was a newly minted assembly member, I was warned about the people of San Mateo. Just do not stand in their way. And so... As a newly minted assembly member, the tunnel had a little problem. It needed a little bit more land. Now, Harry would never ask me for more land, but Bijan is just shameless. <laughs> he says, we need more land, you better give us more land, or else we're not going to build that tunnel, and you're going to have to explain that. And so some way, somehow, we worked it out, and the land was there. And then I get a call from Tom Lantos and said, well, since you kind of already, you know, sort of dipped into the water, you might as well jump in and get some more money. And so that's how I got involved in this, and it has been an expensive, expensive uh, project for me, I, I will tell you. But this is an extremely important project, as I think Anna and Jackie have said so many times. Uh, this is, in fact a tremendous access road for all of us in the coast side. 
and now the benefits of having a ancillary road that is available for people to bike and walk and to really understand and appreciate the goodness, the generosity of, of, of what is available here for everyone is something to be behold. And so I wanted to say again, thank you for allowing me to be a little bit part of this particular history. I also have a um, resolution um, that the Senate um, uh, put together, and this is to honor Tom Lantos. Uh, he was such a tremendous force in my life, in my career, in representing this area, and I constantly am reminded about Tom's uh, graciousness and forthrightness in representing all of us. I ask that the Senate uh, would in fact honor Tom by calling this the Tom Lantos Tunnel at Devil's Slides. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. This is the first day for safe and sure travel through these uh, beautiful rugged mountains. But you know, when you look at history and kind of the significance of that, that's not new trying to get around these mountains. And uh, you know, just a short ways further inland from here in the fall of 1769, scouts for the expedition led by uh, Gasp and Bijan was there too, I know he was. <laughs> trying to figure out a way to get around it. But uh, the uh, scouts for the expedition led by uh, Gaspard de Portola trekked up the hills northeast of St. Pedro Valley to the area we now know as Sweeney Ridge. From there, those scouts and soon afterward uh, visited and saw the uh, city of San Francisco and San Francisco Bay, which wasn't uh, a city as yet. But for the explorers of that vista, it was a reward for a long and, and sometimes frustrating journey. And perhaps uh, many of us uh, may view the opening of these tunnels today as that same long and frustrating journey. Uh, and, and in another interesting echo to the past, it took uh, Port lot two hours to travel on a very poor road up this mountain uh, to reach Sweeney Ridge. And it was not much easier traversing San Pedro Mountain in the 19th century. You know, there were some enterprising souls then that actually had chutes that they constructed that would go around the mountain so they could take goods from one side at the high and drop them down to the other side. Or they would put piers to try and get around the mountain, piers dug into the side that they could walk along to take goods and merchandise from one side to the other. So what may come as a surprise to many, we are not today celebrating the opening of the first tunnel either. There's a tunnel in 1907 when the Ocean Shore Railroad constructed the first tunnel through these mountains, just north of here through which the trains passed for a very short time. So for decades, modern engineers were challenged to make the journey through these mountains safe. Um, and uh, as we all knew in 1995, when this became, uh, that became the, the world's largest cul-de-sac, which created uh, quite a problem for many of us, the closures that we've seen in the past certainly built the momentum. So we owe much to the early visitors to California and to the modern day champions of this region who brought us to this point. And it's no coincidence that Tom Lantos, the namesake of the tunnels that we proudly opened today, was also one of the leaders in Congress to preserve Sweeney Ridge and to make it a part of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. So today's grand opening of the Tom Lantos Tunnels is as much a, tri a tribute to the revered United States representative for this community as it is for everyone who helped complete this important project. Thank you to all of you for that hard work and what we have today. Thank you. I have to say that Caltrans has been incredibly good to work with. So I want to thank the Coastal Conservancy, the Coastal Commission, the Mid Coast Community Council, Caltrans, Pacifica, the City of Pacifica, the City of Half Moon Bay, as well as the Chambers of Commerce of both Pacifica and, uh, and uh, Half Moon Bay. They worked tirelessly on this, uh, on uh, preparing both th today. And we also did a lot in terms of uh, pedestrian safety. And so some of the traffic lights you see back there were things that I pushed seven years ago. Caltrans eventually put them in. It'll make it much safer once we actually have the park on the other side so that people are able to access that in a safe way. And eventually we will, in fact, have the Green Valley Trail to make it possible to not only bike and uh, to hike here as well. So it's going to be a great 
for both Midcoast, for Pacifica, and it's going to, net, it's going to bind those two communities together in a way that uh, is, uh, it hasn't been in the past. It's going to be a remarkable achievement for this uh, entire county, and uh, I want to thank all of you and all of the people from Caltrans, as well as all the construction people, and, uh, and it's going to be fabulous when we see all those old cars drive by, by here. Uh, I'm not as old as some of them, but I might be in some cases. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the city of Half Moon Bay, I'm, I'm really thrilled to be here um, to celebrate the long-awaited um, opening of the Tom Lantos Tunnel. This is a big deal for our community. It's a big deal for Pacifica, and we appreciate all the effort uh, from the tunnelistas and all the elected officials to make this happen today. Um, it, it really helps our community. The opening of the tunnels is significant for the entire coast side. Um, you know, Hefton Bay is, is a wonderful place to live, a wonderful place to work, a wonderful place to visit. Um, and with the tunnel now, it'll be safer, more convenient, more reliable to get there. So, you know, for us, if you're living in Hefton Bay and working up in the city and, and you're traveling every day or you're traveling down to visit our community, we're just really thrilled that we can do that in a safer way, a more convenient way, and a more reliable way. Um, and it just works well for all of us. So I'll be brief, cut it short, and just say thank you again for everybody, and let's enjoy this day. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. This tunnel means so much to our community. This tunnel means that during those El Nino winters, uh, our businesses and our commuters and the people that live here can rest assured that the road is actually going to be here when we wake up in the morning. <laughs> And uh, I think I can safely speak for all Pacificans, which if you know Pacifica politics is not generally advised, but <laughs> I can say, I, I think I'm on firm ground in saying, hallelujah, this day is finally here. Thank you. When I first heard about this project, I was mountain biking down the Montera side of, of Montera Mountain in 1995. And a friend and I had stopped for water, and there's a group of people that I, they were talking about the proposed bypass uh, in, in the direction that it was coming down. It was right where we had mountain biked down, and I later learned that those are tunnel advocates. At that time, I was 15 years old. All right. <laughs> Sorry. And, you know, I just wanted to thank all the advocates today for, for leading with passion and vision and, and purpose. And I think so often we think that, that leadership now is, you know, it's a position or it's a title. But it's not. It's an action. And I just wanted to thank all of you for your action and your leadership. And, and thank you for your contribution to this. And thank you for the preservation of Montero Mountain as well. Thank you. Well, it's a great joy to me to be here, to witness this great moment that we have awaited for well over a generation. It's also very sad for me to be here without my husband. I wish Tom was standing my, by my side, watch, but I know he's watching us. And he's pleased to see that his efforts and his dedication to his community, and especially to this particular project, has finally been realized. When we first came to Congress, Tom, in 1980, Tom had to work very hard. He was a junior member of Congress, and to get the initial funding of $51 uh, million was not an easy undertaking, <laughs> but it was his first major project that he, that he accomplished right after he was elected. And right now we are seeing, bearing the fruits of it, and I'm very grateful for that. He persisted, and here we are. This is, I just hope that from some perspective he's watching us. I know that our children and our grandchildren will have the wonderful convenience of this beautiful new tunnel, and they will have the luxury of taking it for granted. Hopefully they will do other things, other great things that we have not yet dreamed of, and as, a, as an appreciation for what we have done for them. Thank you for putting Tom's name on this tunnel. He was a great man. And this um, tunnel is a wonderful representation of his determination to improve the lives of those he cared for. He would be so happy to know that it bears his name. Thank you very much. <laughs>
My name is Annette Lantos Tilleman Dick, and yes, it is a good morning. It is a wonderful moment to celebrate the fruits of patience, cooperation, and vision that is represented by the Tom Lantos Tunnels. On behalf of the Lantos family, and that includes all those in my father's office and the many, many beloved friends who became our family when my parents moved here to the Bay Area in 1950. They had very little family left. And we would like to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for choosing to name this magnificent structure, this amazing achievement of so many people after my father, Tom Lantos, who ardently loved this heavenly spot of earth and wanted to help preserve it and improve it. What a powerful witness this tunnel is to the determination of those who persisted in pushing for a passage that preserved the beauty of this place and created a safe, efficient, exciting, and reliable connection to the city and the other parts of the peninsula. Though the motorists may miss the gorgeous vistas, they won't miss the closures and they won't miss the dangers. And um, thanks are due to so, so many, to the citizen warriors who truly carried on and sallied forth. My parents know your names and they talk about you. Both of them did to me. To the great representatives in Congress who have carried on magnificently what my father began. 50 million sounds like a lot. Well, you know, only 400 more necessary, but whatever. And for those who, who labored to build and contribute to build these tunnels and those who paid for them, which really include all the members of our great nation. My dad loved Robert Frost, and his well-worn words from The Road Less Traveled seem somehow appropriate today. Two roads diverged in the woods, in the mountains, and I took the one less traveled on, and that has made all the difference. This has been a road of respect, endurance, creativity, and commitment. May it be one that we all work to follow. Thank you so much. Oh, wow, what a day. <laughs> well, here in San Mateo County, we're known for mobilizing on behalf of Mother Nature. And in 1995, boy, did Mother Nature mobilize us. That was the year our Highway 1, our lifeline, collapsed and was closed for months and months and months. And we knew it was now or never. The project at hand, the inland bypass, promised as much environmental destruction as traffic relief. Our political leadership at the time was unwilling to pursue any alternative to that bypass. It had no stomach for battling angry motorists and business owners whose businesses were suffering as a result of the road closure. It took an uprising of the people to think tunnel, to vote tunnel, to build tunnel, and today at last to open tunnel. <laughs> These are the people, the tunnelistas, who are responsible for our being here today. So right now, I want all you rabble rousers, you activists, you crusaders to stand up right now and show your colors, all of you. Stay standing. These are the people who elected their officials, who tabled in front of Safeway, who created computer graphics, who collected signatures, circulated petitions, built models, computer graphics, and yes, even a website in 1996. <laughs> you are the people who would not give up until this mountain was safe. You deserve the credit for this fine celebration today. So I ask all of you to join me in thanking these citizen activists. <laughs> now for every tunnelista here today, there are four or five others who also share credit. First among them is our beloved Ali Mayor. I'm very sad to say that Ali passed away just five days ago. After a full life of public service, 
and almost half a century of leadership and hard work to save her beloved Montera Mountain. I know she's with us here today, grinning from ear to ear. We are honored that these tunnels are named for the late Congressman Tom Lantos, whose tireless efforts along with Senator Barbara Boxer and our other fine elected representatives led to the funding of this project. Others have spoken of this extraordinary man, and quite simply there would be no tunnel without his efforts. No doubt he's here with us as well today. However, there would have been no tunnel project if it hadn't been for the effort of the people who knew the right thing to do and who fought so hard for it. So in my mind, in Lenny Roberts' mind, in the mind of tunnelistas everywhere, this is and will always be the people's tunnel. Yes. The people's tunnel, not just for those of us who envisioned it and fought for it, but for future generations who will marvel at the engineering feat we celebrate today as graceful and inspiring as any road anywhere in the world. Caltrans, aren't you glad we made you build this? <laughs> but most of all, this campaign has been for our children who love and treasure these precious resources as much as we do. The open spaces, the agricultural lands, the parks, and we'll enjoy them forever now and know that we valued them enough to fight this epic battle and to see it through to the end. So I thank you today to all the people who built the tunnel, who paid for it, and who made it beautiful. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you, the citizen activists, who had the courage to make this much more than a dream. You made it a reality. Hooray, it's the People's Tunnel. We did it. <laughs>